The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, welcome to today's webinar. We're going to wait for just a few moments while we let all the other attendees join. Okay, it looks like everyone has joined. We'll go ahead and get started with today's Snow Gauge webinar. Here's the agenda for today. We're going to try to keep this a uh, fast webinar, about two minutes or less. We're going to start with a brief Snow Gauge company introduction. We're then going to look at a Snow Gauge product overview. And then we're going to try to spend the majority of the time giving a live demonstration of Snow, Snow Gauge and looking at some data from a real resort in North America. Uh, as well as have a look at what that looks like inside of the Snowcat as well. If you do have any questions along the way, please be sure to write those in the Snowgate or in the GoToMeeting chat dialog, and we'll be sure to follow up with those at the end of the webinar. All right, here's a brief company introduction. Snowgauge is actually designed and manufactured by Juniper Systems, and here at Juniper Systems, we are a specialist in field data collection in extreme environments. We design and manufacture rugged field computers as well as high precision GPS and those are used for a wide range of applications generally in challenging uh, areas where people need to collect data. Our parent company is Campbell Scientific. They are located across the field here in, in Logan, Utah and if you don't know where Logan is it's about 90 minutes north of Salt Lake City, Utah on the other side of Wasatch Mountains right on the Idaho border. Um, Campbell Scientific are the world leaders in manufacturing data loggers used for things like weather stations. And so coincidentally, a lot of Campbell Scientific equipment uh, is installed around the ski resorts where our customers are using snow gauge as well. Um, and it's also important to say here at Juniper Systems, we're really passionate about field data collection in you know, challenging environments, but we're also, we really love to ski and snowboard. And so we really like uh, working with the customers that we have for Snow Gauge. All right, let's move on to do really a Snow Gauge product overview. So with Snow Gauge, there really is uh, three major components uh, in, from a hardware perspective. We do have the ultra wideband radar sensor. This is designed and manufactured by our parent company, Campbell Scientific. It's inside of a rugged enclosure about the size of a, a shoebox and it gets mounted onto the bottom of snow cats and we do have experience mounting those in most major uh, makes and models of snow cats as well the next major part of the snow gauge system is is our geo gps and this is a real-time sub meter accuracy so accuracy gps it's a high accurate gps that was meant to work in kind of challenging terrain. So we do work a lot with forestry type customers and other natural resource type applications. So it's really important that this receiver work well, and maintain accuracy, even in kind of challenging environments under tree canopy, on mountains, in canyons, those types of environments. So to really get GPS to be using for the snow gauge uh, system. The other major component is the Mesa 2 rugged tablet computer that we designed and manufacture. And this is what's mounted inside of the snow cat. And this is where, you know, the user can kind of interact and see the depths of the, of the snow below the snow cat. And it, it serves to show them the map and all the other kind of interface with snow gauge. All right. So with snow gauge, you, know, you have a scenario where inside of the snow cat, you see this kind of view where you see yourself a GPS. You see the depth directly below you. Um, you see yourself moving along in the map. You can look at previous days data. Uh, to see how deep the snow is uh, was when you passed over there last. So you may have one or several snow cats that have snow gauge sensors mounted on them, and those those snow cats send data automatically uh, to the office. And in the office, uh, snow snow grooming managers or or operations managers can view the data for everywhere that the snow cat traveled with the snow gauge sensor. So here you see the end product being a colored map based on the different depths that the user defines. So you would see in the red areas, the snow, the snow depths are, are lower, and in the, the kind of blue and green areas in this particular case, they're a lot deeper. So this really just is a tool that allows users in the snow cat to see how deep the snow is below them, but in the office to see um, troubled areas, places where they want to focus grooming efforts or snowmaking efforts. 
we'll give some more details and uh, take a more detailed look at this in a little while here. All right, inside of the snowcat, here's an example of a snow gauge mounted insulation. So as you're driving inside the cat, you can look over and see the tablet computer and interface with it. You know, and the real benefits of this is, you know, as I mentioned before, you can see that the real time snow depth. And so you're really saving time uh, manually probing the snow to understand uh, the depths and, and, and to determine what your coverage goals are going to be. You can also prioritize where grooming is needed most. Um, so you can look at snow depths from previous days, so you know where you want to focus your efforts. You can see your uh, snow cap position on the map, and you know it really allows the operator to move from high to low places to to focus their attention. You know, ultimately, data from the snow cap is sent automatically via cell, or it can be sent wi via uh, Wi-Fi. Um, there is also a method to transfer data manually if if neither of those options are available. Finally, one of the best things about snow gauge, it's really easy to use. That was the main intent. The idea is that you turn on the snow cat, everything just starts working. Uh, we typically see about five minutes for training operators and, and they become proficient in using snow gauge. Uh, so that was really a, a key part of snow gauge that we wanted to maintain. All right. Another benefit of snow gauge is that it can install to any snow cat. So you may have a fleet of snow cats. If you do have scenario where you know, maybe you're leasing a snowcat or you're going to sell the snowcat. Snow gauge can be easily transferred from snowcats that are retired or sold or leased. All right. So with all our customers, we want to make sure and talk about, you know, when, what are the limitations and make sure to set the right expectation to snow gauge. One of the big limitations um, that we, we communicate to customers is that snow gauge, the technology and the sensor ultra wideband radar is not accurate when there's a liquid water scenario. So during spring meltdown, you know, it's, it's not as accurate. We don't recommend it for spring meltdown type monitoring of your snow. Um, it's most useful to assist in, you know, really achieving those early season coverage goals, you know, snow make when there's heavy snow making during holiday preparations, you know, and maintaining those mid season coverages. But when there's a lot of water content on the snow, um, where it's just liquid water and there's meltdown, you know, the snow gauge ultra wideband radar um, technology does not work great in that situation. So we don't recommend it for those situations. We also want to make sure that customers understand that typically after about two meters or six feet, uh, the snow gauge sensor is no longer, uh, you know, super reliable. We'd like to hold ourselves to a pretty high standard on our, our accuracy. And we typically see about, you know, with a 95% confidence, we do see about a plus or minus five inches um, accuracy under normal situations. Um, but after six feet, that starts to degrade quickly, and we don't like to recommend it for applications when the snow is deeper than six feet. Um, other kind of similar limitations is that, with, you know, when you're driving the sensor over bare ground, like a parking lot or something like that, and if there's pavement, um, the sensor, you know, kind of gives some readings that aren't accurate as well. It's not telling you zero at that point. So, you know, those are just some expectations and limitations that we have to communicate for any snow gauge customers. All right. So snow gauge in the office. We're going to do a, an actual demo of this in a little while, but you know you do have this log, nice login um, in the office. You can see where the snow cats traveled. You can also generate some custom reports based on time period. So you know this helps grooming managers make informed decisions. They can view the snow status, you know, on the secure website. You know, it's generally used to determine grooming priority. Um, they can also share trail status with other resort operations like ski patrol or snowmaking operations, for example. And then, you know, the reports are quite nice, actually. It just gives you the ability to filter and collect and understand, you know, for example, total hours groomed, you know, the distance traveled, the average speed, um, idle times. Those are not listed on here, but under our new version of Snow Gauge, you see idle time and and some additional stats as well. So there's been a lot of focus on measuring snow depth from the snowcat, and there are several alternatives that are available. And so we thought we'd put this, this slide together to kind of look at what are the different types of technologies and options available here. So on the left, here's the snow gauge uh, using the ultra wideband radar that we talked about. There's another uh, option too, to use ground penetrating radar with a different product. And then finally, another one that's um, kind of come about more recently is the use of RTK GPS. So a very high precision GPS that allows you to um, 
look at the difference of elevation between where the snowcat is above like a pre-season survey elevation as well. And so, you know, all of these are, are very exciting and cool technology. Um, there's some pros and cons of each. Um, with snow gauge and the ultra wideband radar, you know, installation is, we would, we would say is the easiest. So installation and setup is easy. There's no need to kind of calibrate the equipment. If there is some settings you can use to kind of change calibrations on the sensor, and we just do that from the office, and that's automatically sent to the, to the snowcat. Um, there's snow depth, snow depth accuracy is excellent. Um, however, I did mention the limitations before for springtime water. Um, you know, it's not meant for those types of applications. Um, fleet management, you know, engine integration, really snow gauge, we were really focusing on accurate snow depths. That's our primary goal, as well as ease of use. And so we wanted to make simple reports that we did not and, we, and do not integrate with the CAN bus, for example, of the snowcat. Um, we do, we can use our sensor with other companies that do the, that focus on those types of, you know, engine diagnostic and other things and having snow depth installed with those systems. But here at Snow Gauge, we were really focusing on ease of use and getting accurate snow depths. And then certainly the cost is, is, is easily the most affordable compared to the alternatives that are out there. You know, with the ground penetrating radar, um, there's a larger physical setup. There are some, from what we understand from our customers that have used these, that there are some frequent onslaught calibration. The snow depth accuracy is, is, is quite good. And we do like that with ground penetrating radar, you can look at some different, you know, snow sats and statistics as well. Um, that's a pretty cool feature of this type of technology. Um, you know, depending on which software you use, you can have some engine integration similar to snow gauge. It's, you know, depending what software you integrate, you know, the cost is certainly more expensive than snow gauge as well. <clears throat> and then finally with the RTK GPS type technology, you know, installation and setup is, is, Certainly most difficult, especially considering some of the, you know, pre-season activities that you have to do. Um, calibration requirement, you know, I think once you get it all set up and running, it, you know, there's no need for calibration. Um, snow, depth, snow depth accuracy is, is, uh, is excellent as well. Um, and it's also, you know, but you do have to make sure you do have ideal GPS conditions. You know, so things like tree canopy and canyon satellites, uh, mask is, is certainly does impact this type of GPS uh, pretty significantly. Um, there are um, good options here for fleet management and engine integration. And um, definitely this among all the three options is the most expensive. All right. So now, you know, with Snow Gauge, you do have some flexible purchase options if you consider this route. You know, you can buy it out, right? It's going to be under $20,000 and includes all the hardware and software. There is a, you know, clues all, there is a small uh, minimal data hosting support cost for subsequent years to keep it all up and running, but it is pretty minimal for that. Um, with the second option, this is one of our most popular, um, we do offer a three-year payment option. It's really under 7000 per year. It includes all the hardware and software, all the data hosting fees. You know, after that third year, that same minimal data hosting fee is required, but um, again, it's pretty minor relative to other costs. Finally, with installation, we do offer remote installation for free. If we have site installation, a lot of, most of our customers, uh, you know, do ask because they're pretty busy, ask us to come out and they'll just uh, ask to cover travel costs. So we want to keep that low. All right. Now we're going to move over to our snow gauge demonstration in the office. So I'm going to log into an actual resort here. Okay. Bring this over here. All right. Usually, here's what you see when you first see start with snow gauge. I usually like to make it a bigger view at first. So I first make it a big view. I like to turn on all of the trails as well. So I come over here, turn on all the trails. I can kind of zoom out a little bit. Now, snow gauge, in order to look at your data, during the season, this is the most common, the last 24 hours. So you show up at work in the morning, perhaps, then you could see all the, the places that the snowcats traveled in the 24 hours previous. Um, you know, you can also just look at most recent data. So you can see where, you know, each trail and when it was most recently groomed. In this case, since it's summertime and we're, or fall anyway, and we're trying to um, look at some data, I'm going to look at some data from last winter. And we just pick a day that I know, uh, you know, there was some good data for this particular resort. 
All right. So here you see everywhere where the snowcat traveled. Down here, you see, you know, the zero to one foot, one to two foot, two to three feet. You know, it changes by color. So the green in this particular case is three to four feet. And that is user defined. So you can set those to however you want to see it. So if we zoom in a little bit, you can see where this sensor was being used. All right. Here's a pretty good view. So you can see all the trails that were groomed by this snowcat and everywhere, everywhere it traveled. Now, some, some users prefer this view. Zoom in. I can see where those snowcat traveled. So there was two passes right here. And you can see the two tracks. You know, here in the yellow, again, it's two to three feet. In the green, it's three to four feet. So pretty good snow depths in that particular spot right there. Personally, I like this view. I switched to kind of a point view. Each one of these points represent a pulse of the snow gauge sensor. You know, so right there, there's a depth, depth of three, three feet. And you can kind of zoom out. The reason I like this is when it starts to kind of meld together. So I can kind of zoom in and look at spots that are kind of smaller. But this one gives me a nice view of where the snowcat actually traveled in the particular depth right at that spot. Here in this case, you can see the, the you know, this is probably near their garage. You can start to see where it's low. We're probably around the parking lot traveling over here. You know, see over here, it looks like they did some some construction over and maybe perhaps pushing some of the snow or driving along the parking lot. And you can see as they get close to the parking lot, it's getting, it's getting uh, not as deep and then kind of more fat in these areas right there. So this is kind of how snow gauge is used. You can look and really use this information to target your snow making operations. So anywhere where you see a low spots, you can, you know, use that to instruct your, your snow making staff or crew to, to kind of build piles in those areas. Um, and it's pretty nice. If you had multiple sensors, you can turn on and off by each sensor um, or snowcat, for example, in this area. This particular ski resort didn't set up or we haven't set up um, all of their trails yet. But this right here in the ski runs, if you had trails set up, you would just select your trail and it would zoom you to that particular trail. Um, just a way to kind of quickly see when that trail last groomed as well as you know, when um, uh, you know, it's just a way to quickly navigate around the map as well. You can also turn off, you can add your own kind of data from Google Earth here as well. So if you had hydrants, for example, that were throughout the whole resort, you could turn those on or off. Um, you know, other hazards or other kind of geometries or features in the resort, you can put on the map as well and import those from Google Earth. All right, if I switch back to the kind of smaller view, I can start to see the other, you know, settings. It really is an easy to use system. Uh, it's much very similar to Google Earth, if you're familiar with that. So there are some basic settings. This allows you to, if you are having like a powder day, you can switch it to this, you know, over, over to the right. And the sensor works a little better in that environment. Or you switch to the left where it's wet and the sensor works a little better in those types of situations. If you switch that, then your sensors are automatically updated at the snowcat. Um, however, most users just leave these in this kind of middle of the road, packed groomed snow. It works great under most circumstances. We see users very infrequently change these settings. Um, some other things you can do at this spot here is where you define how deep you want to have your snow depths represented. This is a pretty typical or common one. From zero to one foot is red, one to two feet is orange, um, two to three is yellow, and so on and so forth. Um, this is a pretty typical setup, but you can change those um, however you like. This is the spot where you can draw out trails, and by doing this and drawing out the trails, um, this allows you to see very quickly when those trails were last groomed. Um, so it's kind of a nice feature, and this is where you would also uh, import um, data you know, from your, um, from like Google Earth, for example, if you had a bunch of, of hazards or, um, or hydrants, for example, that were mapped. Finally, here's the reporting. So in the last 24 hours of this resort, no activity. But if we switch over to the date that we were looking at, I'll switch over there quickly. So January 20, we'll, we'll go January, I think 17th is the same day that we were doing. So on that day, that particular snowcat had a couple hours of idle time, you know, total grooming time of six hours. Total distance traveled, acres groomed. So it gives you some pretty nice uh, statistics that um, you can look at from your snowcat as well. So really, that, 
that is pretty much it. It's a very easy to use system. It's really meant to, you know, make the lives easier for the, um, for the grooming and operations staff and planning, planning their activity. I'll go back, have one more quick look at it. Oops. Change that to January 17th. Yeah, it's really nice. So, uh, with that, we're now going to have a quick look at the, uh, snow gauge inside of the snowcat. And this one, because it is off season, we just drove around the parking lot and, uh, wanted to give you a flavor of what it looked like. Um, now, in this case, this is probably the most common view that our customers like to see. It's the graph view. It's much like a fish finder. So as you're, as you're going along, the graph, depending on, you know, the depth you're at, will change colors like a fish finder and it's moving as you move. And if you get into a low spot, it might dip down and show you red and then it'll start climbing back up as, as the snow cat travels over deeper snow. So it's just, this is probably, like I said, the most common view. You have your big, big old snow depth number there. Um, and at this point, uh, users then can switch to a map view. So if I switch over to that, you know, this would be like a map view. You just see it traveling, following you around. Um, and it's, you know, showing you the, the, the snow depth pulses. And those are set. I think you can change them to about every three seconds. It'll take a, a pulse, but you can change those settings to, to reflect, um, what you would like a more frequent or less frequent view of those snow depths as well. Um, there are a couple of other nice features when you, when you get into, uh, the, you know, snow making or, uh, uh, grooming, you can select dates, previous dates. So you can see the depths, you know, if you're coming up to a trail and you wanted to see what it was like yet the day before, for example, you can see that, uh, the trail would, you know, it would show you all the colors from before and all the depths from the previous day. So then you would know that maybe you would do a little snow construction or moving some snow around to achieve your coverage goals. One of the other kind of interesting um, features of snow gauge is that you can switch it to a maintenance mode. So if you did make a giant snow pile, you can, uh, and you know, it's getting beyond the six foot accuracy of the snow depth, but you really just didn't want to have that pushing back and forth on the map. You can switch this to a, a maintenance mode where your depths are not being, re being recorded. And so you can then, uh, flip it back. And when you've got your coverage finished product, you can then do your final pass with your, your snow gauge sensor back on. And that way, when your, your map back in the office, it's going to show the end depth that you had, um, at the, at the, once you are completed with any kind of, uh, maintenance as well. There are some other smaller views that are, um, less used, mostly for troubleshooting. You can kind of see data moving in, uh, from the GPS as well as the sensor as well. But those are generally not used by any grooming staff or management. All right. So that's really um, the end. And snow gauge is, is that easy to use. And, and if you would like to schedule a demonstration for this season or want to learn anything more about snow gauge, here's the contact information. Paul Kelly is our snow gauge account manager here at Juniper Systems. And here is our contact information as well. Um, we're happy to make recommendations for the upcoming season. And yeah, thank you for joining today's webinar. And we look forward to having a good season.